the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 154, Psalms 107-118 to David, who praised the Messiah in the faith that God the Father is at his right hand, the psalmist trusted only God while pouring out all his sorrow and grief without feeling ashamed. First point. David sang that he would awaken the dawn. In Psalm 180, David confessed that the reason he stood upright was because of God's right hand, always helping him. My heart, O oh God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music with all my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Psalm 180 verses 1 to 5 is similar to Psalm 57 verses 7 to 11 and Psalm 108 verses 6 to 13 is similar to Psalm 60 verses 5 to 12. They all seek God's salvation and furthermore sing God's praises. David was completely sure that he could get through anything with the courage that God gave him. David said a similar prayer when he met Saul in the cave in Psalm 108. David was able to do so because he wanted God to receive all the glory in the world. In Psalm 108, David sings to God, who not only governs Israel, but the whole world. God is not only for Israel. His mercy extends everywhere. And so David sang that he will awaken the dawn. He wanted his dream to glorify God. Second point. David confessed that all he was able to do was pray. In Psalm 109, David praises God who will curse the wicked and bless and save the righteous. David was able to confess this during times of despair. The theme of looking to God while being distressed from the wicked can also be seen in Psalms 58, 109, and 137. While they curse, may you bless. May those who attack me be put to shame, but may your servant rejoice. May my accusers be clothed with disgrace and wrapped in shame and in a cloak. The relationship with God is the most important thing during prayer. We must have a poor heart that focuses on God during prayer. David was surrounded by those who repaid the help. With hate and evil, he was most distressed because of these people. All he was able to do was pray to God. It was only God who could repay and judge their evil. And so David poured out his heart and soul to God for him to hear his pains. Help me, Lord my God. Save me according to your unfailing love. Let them know that it is your hand that you, Lord, have done it. David saw God's right hand, which did justice. David experienced God's strength when he fought against Goliath. Because of this, David was always 
able to trust and turn to God. Third point, David sang of the Messiah who was to come as king. Psalm 110 was also written by David. The New Testament makes a reference to this the most out of all the Psalms. The Lord referred to in Psalm 110 was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ would come as the Messiah. The Messiah sits on the right hand throne of God and is the righteous judge. The Messiah also sits on Mount Zion and wears holy clothes to serve the people. The Messiah will come as the high priest. The Messiah will come as the judge. Psalm 110 writes of the rule of the Messiah. While Jesus was teaching in the temple courts, he asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Messiah is the son of David? David himself, speaking by the Holy Spirit, declared, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. David himself calls him Lord. How then can he be his son? The large crowd listened to him with delight. Later in the New Testament, Peter also used this psalm. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Paul also referred to this psalm he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age but also in the one to come. And this psalm was reported to again in the book of Hebrews. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Fourth point, the psalmist sings hallelujah to God's name. Psalm 113 sings hallelujah to God. God protects the weak, feeds the hungry, and also makes barren women bear children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, you his servant. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. The scale which the psalmist shows is incredible in Psalm 113. He speaks of praising God's name forever from sunrise to sunset. God is higher than the heavens, but this Almighty God looks out for all people on earth. He moreover makes sure that justice is served and no one is falsely accused. Who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with the princes with the princes of his people. He settles the childless woman in her home as a happy mother of her children. Praise the Lord. Fifth point. The psalmist confessed that God is his power. Psalm 118 sings praise to God. The psalmist sings praise to God for saving the people and also God's great ability that has protected them. The psalmist sings to God who saved him and also took him away from his suffering. He makes a reference to God saving the Israelites from Egypt. The psalmist expresses and thanks to God who saved those who were hopeless. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. 
The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Jesus makes direct reference to this. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Apostles also reported to this later, Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Now to you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyango Zo has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zo is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.